So today's video is going to be about me overclocking a 9900K and I've also got G-Skill, what was that, I got 4266 megahertz uh, memory, 32 gigabytes of it. Uh, we're going to try and overclock that as well with the CPU. We're not going to try and overclock the graphics card, that's going to be in another video. Obviously like, if you want to have that video as well, uh, we're going to be also um, doing it from stock. So we're doing stock with temperatures and everything with the AIO, Asus, Ryogen, AIO cooler, obviously, and um, we're going to check that with synthetic uh, benchmarks like Cinebench and obviously 3D Mark and uh, Ada 64 for temperatures and stuff like that to see how we get on with it. And then uh, once we see an improvement, uh, we're going to go right till we get to a blue screen where it keeps crashing. And once we get to that, then we're going to update the BIOS and see if there's any difference or lower performance from what it was before. It was meant to be improved, so sometimes they will close it down for the better overclocks that you could get, but the majority of people are not getting good overclocks, so that might be why they clock it down. So it's more of a safer level or there might be a bug. And so far this computer is a little bit buggy, but obviously it needs an updated BIOS, but I don't know, sometimes I've been updating BIOSes and it's still done the same thing. But anyway, let's go into get Cinebench. Uh, for some reason it's, <laughs> I swear Windows has been deleting all my stuff. So hopefully it hasn't, right here we go. Right, so this is all at stock. Um, I shouldn't have anything else running in the background. So I'll just turn off anything I do. So Google, bye bye. Windows Explorer, bye. All right, let's see what score we get. Oh yeah, the graphics card is Asus RTX 2080 Ti. So, bit of a beast card. Definitely be doing a video and overclocking that as well. And then, yeah, let's <laughs> see how good it is, really. I want to see how good the 9900K is, really, with uh, this AIO cooler. So, we've got a score 2062CB at the moment. So, that's that's our baseline at the moment. Um, and that is with the CPU at clocked at 3.6 gigahertz. So, let's run it one more time because you normally run these a few times. Twenty fifty seven and one more. And then what we'll do is we'll run this in the background, uh Ada sixty four in the background so you can see the temperatures going while this is going as well. Because now we're checking for temperatures, we've got a baseline of scores. Right, twenty fifty seven. Right, okay. So let's get uh Ada sixty four up. All right now, as you can see temperatures are idle at Low, well, the motherboard's at 36, and I think the CPU, one of the CPU cores is at 39. Let's have a look. No, at 40, actually. Right, so let's uh, get going. Let's run it again. As you can see, it went straight into the 70s just out of the box, straight into the 70 uh, degrees. I think the highest is 71. So obviously we've got it running in the background so it's gonna take the score down a bit, but we'll run that three times as well, because you wanna check. All right, then it drops straight down. Uh, one more go, so we can just check that. Right, there we go, there we have it. Now, we're gonna run, I'm gonna restart the computer so it's all fresh again, and then run 3D Mark on there. And then I'm gonna do a stress test uh, on the CPU for 15 minutes just to see what it's like um, with temperatures and how well it's working with obviously being stopped. So let's restart the computer. All right, so we get uh, CPU Z up quickly. It's still on stock at the moment. And um, if you can see the voltage and everything like that, it's all not really done anything because everything's all on stock. And uh, when we overclock it, we're going to overclock it on all cores as well at that high frequency. 
of 5.2 gigahertz or maybe 5.3 depending so let's run 3d mark gonna run time spy first so we've got a score of 13,499 um, I could run the bench test one more time but do I really need to <laughs> no, I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it right there. And then um, I'll do... What am I doing now? Yeah. It's, uh, we're going to do a stress test now on um, the actual CPU and see what it's doing. So let's get rid of... Let's save this, actually. This is what we're doing. We're going to do a stress test. 15-minute stress test with everything, all how it is built and see how, it, how we get on. Ambient temperature in this room feels about 18 to 19 degrees because there is a window open and it is letting a little bit of air in and stuff like that but other than that the room is okay, it's comfortable. I know temperatures because I don't like the cold. So let's start it, 15 minutes. So as you can see, the CPU is creeping up. 58 degrees, 53 degrees. So let's see after 15 minutes how we get on. Oh, straight into 78. All right, so these just came through the door. These are the um, Toshiba OCZ RC100s, and uh, these are NVMe drives. But we're not really gonna be doing it right now in this video. We're gonna be doing it in another video to check the difference of speed and obviously price to performance. Well, obviously this is not price to performance, is it? But anyway. As you can see, this computer is running stock right now, and we are definitely hitting like 96 degrees in the highs, and I think we were hit, hitting, what are we hitting? We're hitting like 73 as a low on one other core. Now, this is, and it's also saying CPU throttling, and this happened in 14 minutes or 13 minutes, you'll see in the video. And, um, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I haven't overclocked it, I'm just doing a stress test, and we're already hitting these temperatures. This is the AIO. Right, so this is definitely not going to be ready for Prime Light 5. You can just tell it's not ready, AIO. So what we're going to do, we're going to stop it. And then we're going to overclock to 5 gigahertz because you guys out there, the majority of you probably overclock it to like 4.9, 5 gigahertz, where it's a bit more stable. Um, I'm just going to go straight to 5 gigahertz and then I'm going to try and do after, get a little bit higher than that afterwards. So you can see the temperature drops right down, but even though no really loud noises, stress tested it, that AIO is meant to spin up and make it cool. None of that for the VRMs. Um, so I don't know, but anyway, let's uh, get out of here. So as you can see, CPU speed is 3.6 gigahertz DDR. Speed is uh, 2133. Now we're gonna go into settings and just do the CPU real quickly. Not settings, overclock. Uh, so it's on expert mode. Uh, we keep the AVX to auto at the moment. Um, and we're going to go to CPU ratio to five or 50. So it clocks it at five gigahertz. And then we're gonna to go to, leave the CPU base clock. Then we're gonna clock it up to, I don't know, one point. Let's see how well it does at 1.35 volt, five volts. Which one that? Yeah, 1.35 volt, five volts. And uh, we're just gonna come up with that and leave XMP off and everything like that. Because we wanna make sure things are working. Uh, still got the same old uh, BIOS as well, so no, nope, don't do that. Want to go into it? So, and uh, then we're going to do another Cine bench. See if we can beat that score. What we done when it was not overclocked, it was on stock. Then we're going to do the exactly same setting again with using Ada 64 and stress testing it for 15 minutes and see how we get on. So we're at five gigahertz right here. Uh, voltage is at 1.35 volts. Then we're gonna get rid of that. Let's run it again. Now this is with a five gigahertz overclock. 
So we'll run this three times, so another tw two times after this. Then we'll run it with uh, Ada 64 in the background to see what the temperatures are going to be hitting as well. Then obviously the stress test on its own for 15 minutes. So now with the overclock we're getting 2,146, um, so that's not too bad. Let's run it again. So 2058, and this is what happens when you run it, obviously, run it cold and then you get a better mark than running it when it's really warm and obviously stuff in the background does like take heat and obviously slows the performance down it's not that bad though so 2018 so it's even lower but the overclocks there you can see the score has improved from the first run now we're going to get ada 64 going in the background straight away we have cpu throttling <laughs> already detected already so let's just uh, go through this. So let's run the score. As you can see, CPU throttling happening already at five gigahertz. CPU is hit 100 degrees straight away. So all it looks like there's a couple, one at 95, one at 92, and maybe after that, yeah, it's definitely throttling straight away at 5 gigahertz, 100 degrees. All right, so we still get a decent score. Let's run that again. So basically, the top cores are literally getting 100 degrees. Lowest is like 91 degrees. And we definitely get CPU throttling, overheating. Uh, CPU usage keeps dropping back down because obviously it's trying to compensate without trying to blow the CPU up. So... That's done. 1982. See, if we have better cooling, this is definitely going to make a better improvement to obviously run the CPU a little bit hot, harder. Um, one more time. 2019. Right, okay. So let's go on to a furthermore overclock after we do a stress test for 15 minutes. So while the CPU is nice and toasty right now, let's see how well it does. As you can see, this is overclocked to five gigahertz and we are definitely hitting the hundreds and it is throttling like crazy up and down and stuff like that. And um, yeah, just going through like a few things, voltages, powers, clocks. It's just all over the place. Mm, I, I don't really know what to say. Let's just carry on overclocking. So let's stop it. Temperature's dropped straight down. There we go. All right, let's overclock to 5.1 gigahertz. Clocked to 1.35 volts. Let's see if that um, loads into 1.35 volts. So we are overclocked into 5.1 gigahertz now. So let's have a look at this quickly. Du -du 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 -du. Yep, 5.1, voltage is still 1.3. Let's see if it's got enough voltage to use for Cinebench. All right, let's go. Twenty fourteen, so it looks like we've gone down a bit. Um but that will happen because I've probably have got things running in the background. But we know we're on an overclock anyway. Other things are probably better improvement than what it is on here. This is just a synthetic benchmark to obviously check to make sure it's still running because the temperature will be running a lot more hotter. Maybe it's throttling. Better cooling, definitely better score. Yep, <laughs> let's keep running it. Or maybe it might need more voltage because it is running at 1.3, volt, 5 volts. That's pretty pretty good at 5.1 gigahertz. Oh, that's even lower score. Right, wow, it's getting hot. So let's get ADA 64 up. And let's check that with that. Yeah, definitely throttling. So idle temperatures at the moment. 
uh, seems to be about 57 as the highest and the lowest I can't even see it's not even come up 50, uh, 62 is the highest 52 so those are idle temps let's just run this quickly straight into 100 97 92 94 96 Ooh. Two cores definitely always hit 100 degrees and then it starts to throttle, CPU throttling, which needs to have decent cooling. But we do all these tests, so they're a little bit more thorough. Alright, that's that one done. Run it again. That's that one done. Now I'll make the screen smaller. The score's getting lower and lower. Let's uh, run that again. Score even lower. Right, okay, so we've done that. Now we'll leave this running for a stress test for 15 minutes. So we get on. Well, this has been throttling like crazy. It's no point me even explaining it. You can see clearly that it's throttling like crazy and it's not gonna be able to hit the cores. It will keep dropping down to make sure it keeps it stable. And this is after a 15 minute run. So it's just basically near enough the same as overclocking it to five gigahertz. Um, right. So now we're going to uh, try and overclock it to 5.2. But this time, We'll keep it a bit more simple to make the video quicker. So we're at 5.1 5 .1 gigahertz. And if we go into settings, I'm sure I still want 1.35 volts. Yep, so 1.535 volts. Okay, this is quite funny. Uh, let's uh, see if we can get um, still hanging on with uh, the voltage at that low level. That'd be good. There we go. I didn't even show you what I did. So let me go back into it. Overclock to 5.2 gigahertz, wherever that is. So 5.2, still at 1.35 volt volts. Where is that? There we go, 1.35 volts. As you can see, we're at 5.2 gigahertz and 1.35 volts still. Um, so we'll get rid of this. And if we go to Cinebench again, let's run that. And it's crashed. So that's where we, we've reached, 1.35 volts. We could up the voltage, but then it gives it more temperatures or higher temperatures. Mm, I'd rather update the BIOS first and then go through it, but um, yeah, obviously, what did we get to? 5.2 gigahertz, got to the screen and it kept crash. Now, I've, I've had this at 5.4 uh, gigahertz, get straight into Windows, and after like, running it a little bit and then crash. 5.3, I got it stable, and uh, yeah, but it's time to do the BIOS update. So let's get the BIOS update and let's get this video going. Right, so what I've done is I've already gone into my drive, which is, is going to be my uh, BIOS drive, and I've already formatted it. So imagine that you plug your USB drive in, I'll just show you again, and then you go here and you go to format it to make sure it's getting cleaned. Just make sure that you don't have anything on there first that you don't want to get rid of because it's will format the drive completely and you won't, it will be all lost. So after it's done, I've got a slow drive in there like a USB backwards thing. Anyway, so okay, then cancel that. Then we're gonna download the up-to-date BIOS that for this motherboard. So this is saying that it's uh, version 7B, 10, version 12, 2018, um, and it's October the 16th, and it's 8.15 megabytes. Improved USB 
KB compatibility, improve M.2 Genie function, improve memory compatibility. So I'm having problems with my memory at the moment, so this hopefully it will work. And these should be already updated as well, obviously, because of this. So let's just go ahead and download that. Everything's at stock as well because I cleared um, everything, made it all back to stock without the overclock and that. So I'm going to go down to M Flash, click into that. System will auto reboot and enter flash mode. Do you want to enter flash mode? Yes. So this um, obviously is my AIO with uh, the GIF files, and this is the one we really want to go into. And you want to click into that. So I am going from uh, E7B10IMS. So let's get in there. Let's work it out. Uh, are you sure you want to set this file? Yes. Please set the multi bar switch to the target bus and then press OK. Right, all right. So let's take this off quickly. Let's make sure that it keeps my BIOS safe. And it's my switch down here. So it's on. BIOS is updating. And it should be as simple as that, but as you know with computers, nothing's that simple. Uh, and everyone's speed's gonna be different. I've got a slow USB that I'm using. You might have a faster one, or regardless of whatever. That's how fast it's gonna be. Well, it's how slow it should be. So after it's done, then we'll go through all the, the stuff that we've gone through before to see if there's any more improvements and obviously more stability as well. And also do not power off your computer or anything like that and hope to God you don't have a power cut. Because then I'll have to make a video of how to unbrick your uh, motherboard and other stuff. But hopefully it won't happen. And that should be it, but we're going to go back into the BIOS now. Just to make sure everything has taken heed. So let's restart it. So far, Windows is, uh, the desktop's there, so that's, that's good. Remove the USB. So as you can see, the BIOS update has moved now. So it's October the 6th, uh, yeah, October the 16th, uh, 2018. Uh, so we've got a new uh, BIOS update on there, so that's really quite cool. Um, Let's um, let's check it at stock first, and then we'll go back into uh, to going straight into an overclock to from five gigahertz upwards. So everything's all the same. So let's run a score. Twenty forty. It looks like slightly a little bit better than what it was before. Okay, let's run it again. 2039, okay. Let's run it again. 2031, okay. So now we get ADA 64, check temperature, see if there's any improvements. Uh, in the low 44s, 45s, not too bad. Let's run it, let's see what we get. So that's stock who I can see just the, uh, below the 80s. So now we're at 78 and the lowest core is 71. All right, that's done. Let's run it again. One more go. 2040, that's even better. With two things going at the same time. So that's pretty cool. Right, so, so far 2015 CB, right, so um, now we're going to, is this stock? I'm sure this is stock. And we've got a good score so far, so let's overclock it to 5 gigahertz on the new, um, the new BIOS update. Right, so we're going to go straight into uh, 5 gigahertz. We're now going to play around. So we're going to start off with, and we're going to keep it at 1.3 five volts, where is it? On uh, one, three, five, four, five, four volts, can we speak probably? Escape, I'll just make sure that's all in there properly. Work. 
Okay, file folds. Yep, okay. And then we'll go to send, save it. Twenty ninety four. Okay, I have seen a lot higher. So as you can see, we've got CPU um, throttling already before I even done anything. But let's just run the benchmarks. See what's going down. So loads of fifty six straight into ninety nine, one hundred ninety five, ninety two, and ninety. So I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. We can definitely see thermal throttling going on. So now we're going to just see what we can do with getting the highest overclock now with what we got. So if we can get to like 5.3 gigahertz and then it works, that's kind of our overclock. And then obviously you tinker around in the BIOS until you can get a nice, very cooler, stable overclock. Other than that, um, this is what the AIO is capable of doing. So obviously if it's water cooled, it can, the CPU could be pushed a lot more further. But as you can hear, the AIO is not even rising to cool the VRMs down or anything like that. And this is what's happening on its own. Let's go straight to 5.2 5 gigahertz. Let's try it at 1.35 volts still. And it's crashed at 5.2 gigahertz. That's what happens when you've got too much heat. Or not enough voltage. And it needs more voltage. So let's put some more voltage on there. We're going to go to 1.4 volts now. Right, let's push the voltage up to 1.4. And see if that's stable. All right, let's use ADA 64. The Cine bench and let's see what happens now. Stability. CPU throttling already, CPU usage already, I ain't even using it yet. Yeah, straight up there as normal. It's just throttling, so it's just trying to protect itself from having all cores at 100 degrees, which is not very safe. So two of them will be working hard and the rest will be like a little bit lower to keep it cool. But yeah, there's no real performance. I kind of lost performance by overclocking it with an AIO and I've got given it enough voltage and it wants to go further, but it won't go any further because there's not enough cooling there as well. Because that's what uh, CPU throttling is, overheating detected. So unless I can keep that cool, and that AIO is not exactly keeping it cool because it's not. You would think when it says CPU throttling, it should definitely be cooling it down, but it's not. There's no point in me doing a stress test for 15 minutes because you can already see that it's overheating already before it's even done anything. I'm going to go back to uh, previous score. I'll probably, let's say that I overclock at the moment, which is safe on here, which is kind of 4.9 and 5 gigahertz max. So I'll just literally just do a 5 gigahertz overclock and then we'll just show you the memory really quickly because uh, it's been probably a long enough video as it is. So let's down clock to what is more of a safety measure of 5 or 5.1. Let's just do it 5 gigahertz and then we'll clock down to 1.35 volts and then we'll go into the memory and we will go into where is it say try it let's try that and this should do all my timings and everything like that as well uh, so let's start off with 3866 uh, before when I went to overclock it before with this easy like setup um, it was doing my head in because it couldn't go any further, but this memory's clocked at 4,266 megahertz, and this motherboard should be able to do 4,600. So let's hopefully it should work because the BIOS is updated and everything like that now should work. Normally, what I would do is go into uh, do all this all manually and go into drum voltage. Actually, I don't know why that is. 
Well, let's leave it at 1.35 volt, 5 volts. Should be able to go up to 2,000, no, 2.2 uh, volts, yeah. So that should be the maximum. And then you just tinker with other stuff to do with the voltage. Not everything, though, but just if you're a little bit of an expert, then you can play around with things. But if you're not, then stay away from it. This is probably the easiest way for you to do it if you've got this memory. Uh, so now we've got XMP on, um, and we're at 5 gigahertz, I think. Uh, what did I do? 5.1. 5 gigahertz, right, okay, so settings, save, save changes. And let's see um, if there's any more improvement on um, Cinebench, which there would be, but obviously if it's not cooling very well, it's gonna be all over the place. Let's hope, it might be different. Memory looks good though, the stain, it's been normal. I think it's been normal, it's not exactly moving, it's just static and the colour, it's like it's frozen. So, maybe it's not, maybe it's broken. And that's probably why I can't go over the clocks. Really, I should be testing each RAM stick to, for the highest overclock. But, I just for this video, I wanted to just do it like this. So, we were overclocked 5 gigahertz on all cores. We're at 1.35 volts and the memory is obviously up so that's good that's what we want so let's go to okay and let's go to Cinebench and see if there's any more improvements probably won't be though because I do remember it's throttling even at 5 gigahertz as well or, or did it throttle 5 gigahertz oh, I can't remember I'm actually speaking to G-Skill already at the point of this video because the memory there you go <laughs> It's not working properly. That's that's another reason. So yeah, we've hit the blue screen. We don't need uh, to go any further. I already know that I can push it to 5.4 gigahertz. I'll show you quickly just to show you. But um, obviously you need to tinker with it to obviously have it stable. When I haven't had it stable, we'll just had it going to Windows. Or sometimes the blue screen, it depends on how cool it is or how, how hot it is, the CPU and that. But yeah. What are we on? 5 gigahertz. And it's already crashed. Right, okay. Right, now I'm just going to show you what it does. Because you already know that 5 gigahertz was stable at that, that point. Because we've already done loads of tests with it. So it's down to the memory. Since XMP's on, it's really annoying. I'm not going to touch the AVX. Because I know if I do AVX, then I don't get enough power drawers. What I would normally have. But when I did start testing this out, I went to a minus uh, 4 on uh, AVX, and I also tried 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, I don't really want to do that. I think that was like 5.4 gigahertz though, and then it started to not work properly. Anyway, let's go to memory real quick. So, if I go to, where is it? Try it again. Should be able to, I should easily be able to go to 4266. Let's just go straight to, no, let's go to 4000. Let's just prove that it doesn't work. No signal detected, so I'm guessing it didn't work. Oh, no, it didn't work. See, that's what I mean. It doesn't work. That memory does not work properly. So, back to the drawing board, and then obviously just testing things as you can see all settings were reset default values and all that sort of stuff run set up basically that means your overclock didn't work anywho um so let's go back if i switch off xmp watch this work this will make you laugh so basically the bios that i've updated hasn't done anything else different to it it's still exactly the same. So, I could try other different biases, but I would rather find out who's got the same sort of setup and could just let me some info and let me know because it's too much of a mission going through all of this and it's still not getting any results. But at least you can see for yourself that this AIO caller is okay if you're just using it as just bog standard, but anything else is definitely not worth it, 100%. And it looks like that overclock didn't work either. 
Alright, so we're just going to end the video here because I've had enough now of uh, doing all this overclocking stuff. Uh, need some time to breathe. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, if you're going to use the game boost, be very wary because it could probably blow up your computer. I wonder how much it goes up to. Does it tell me in here how much it goes up to? I don't know. Well, I'll have, I'll have a look at that another time. If you want to have a look at that, we'll, we'll have a look at that and check it out. But anyway, I hope this video is in-depth enough about the AIO and the overclocking on like a 240 setup. Um, yeah, any questions, leave them down below or any um, things that you would like to see in on the channel, just leave them in the links in the comments down below and if you want to buy any of these components amazon links that help us out and gives us a little kickback if you want to go and purchase any of these products it doesn't cost you anything other than whatever you're buying but it doesn't cost anything extra anyway this is roger and roger and out so subscribe and share and like and all that sort of stuff